everyone to our online ladies meeting. We have a packed programme for you tonight. Firstly, we have some cooking with Tara. We have a Bible talk with Cheryl Briggs, interview with Heather Watson, who is our local CEF worker. And we have some choir pieces and a solo by Claire Spratt, accompanied by Alice Cowan on the piano. But let us begin with a few announcements. Thank you to everyone who came along to our PWs in September. In Drumlega, we had a night of dancing and desserts, um, and we thank you for all the ladies who provided the desserts, and thank you to Tammy for coming along and putting us through our moves. In Mount Joy, four men bravely did a cookery demonstration, and then a lovely supper was enjoyed by all afterwards. Looking ahead to December, we're having two separate meetings planned. In Mountjoy, you're invited to a night out at Mountjoy Football Club for a night of Christmas activities and food. And this is on Thursday, the 8th of December at 7.30. The Drumlega ladies will meet on Monday, the 5th of December at half seven, uh, where we have a varied Christmas programme and some festive cheer for you to enjoy. So please, ladies, come along to support both these events and bring a friend along. The more ladies there are, the, we love to see you there and please come along and do support them. But back to tonight. Cheryl, our church worker, is going to bring a message about growing deeper in action based on the story of the Good Samaritan. And then Julie is going to read this story for us. But let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can be online to meet and also have met in person during our meetings in September. We thank you for each one of our families represented here tonight and we pray for those who are unable to watch due to ill health. We pray your healing hand on those who are sick or recovering in hospital. We ask you to comfort the bereaved and lonely Help us to pray and place our worries and concerns at these uncertain times with you, Lord, who is the provider of all things, and help us to be patient as you surround us in your Holy Spirit. Help us to be uplifted tonight through our programme and help us to be good Samaritan in our daily lives. We pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. So let's begin now with Mount Joy Choir who will sing a song about God's faithfulness, followed by Cheryl and Julie, who will lead in our Bible study. Enjoy, ladies.
Hello everyone. I am going to um, share with you some thoughts today for our ladies meeting. Regarding our theme, Deeper in Action, we are going to think or be reminded of the very famous Australian TV programme. When I was a teenager, everything stopped in the middle of the day, tools were downed. Same in the early evening, it didn't matter if you've seen it before, it had to be watched again. I'm sure you're all very familiar with uh, the Australian soap Neighbours. Um, it was shown on our TV for many years. It was very popular and I'm sure you're familiar with it. But let's remind ourselves of the lyrics of the very famous theme tune. Now you'd be delighted to know I'm going to spare you misery of singing that today. But let's go over the lyrics and remind ourselves. Neighbours. Everybody needs good neighbours. With a little understanding, you can find the perfect blend. Neighbours should be there for one another. That's when good neighbours become good friends. The tune was in my head as I said that. <laughs> so that suggests the relationships between people can progress from small talk, which is initially superficial. So polite conversations, small talk about the weather, etc. can therefore gradually change to opportunities for sharing confidences and growing a deeper relationship with people who, good friends who genuinely care. Today's culture and society, a lot of exchanges are carried on online, um, Facebook, WhatsApp, social media. Um, so a quick text or a Facebook comment or whatever doesn't seem to be a suitable substitute for that personal touch and depth of relationship, which so many of us crave. As we said before, the theme for this year is deeper together. But what does this look like in practice? As women, how do we develop and sustain strong relationships with one another and show God's love regardless of who or what our circumstances? Where do we begin? One of the very most famous lessons in the Bible is a very familiar verse in Luke 10 verse 27. We read, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. To be effective in demonstrating God's love to others and going deeper together, surely we must go deeper into our personal relationship with God. We will need to grow in him daily through our daily Bible study and prayer, spending time with him and becoming rooted and established in love. This depth of love for God with every part of our being should then naturally outpour to our neighbours, whoever they might be. So then, who is our neighbour? And what exactly is involved if we dare to go deeper together? At this point, we will hear a Bible lesson from Julie. Luke 10 verses 25 to 37, the parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. 
Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Let's note three things which we can learn from this parable. The first lesson we can draw is one of compassion. If we are to nurture deeper relationships with others, we need to have compassionate hearts. In the, par in the parable, the traveller was attacked and left in a critical condition. The priest and the Levite, both religious men of their day, saw him but passed on the other side. They probably felt concern about the injured man, but not enough to move on, move them into action or to change their own agenda. The Samaritan, however, took pity on him and stopped and began to help the man. He put the needs of the other person before his own. So how does this challenge us? So often we can be like the priest in the Levite. We see someone in need. We feel concern for them, but hesitate to get personally involved. Maybe we're too busy, too tired, or we have enough problems of our own. Maybe it would require too much effort. Maybe we feel awkward or don't know what to say or it's just easier to avoid them. We think time will heal the situation and then things carry on as usual. Going deeper together means we need to become unselfish in our thoughts and actions. We, need, we will be intentional in taking further steps to help. First and foremost, we will pray for them and even with them, but then there's still more to be done. The old adage says, actions speak louder than words. But if we are to grow deeper together, both are needed. We will be prepared to get our hands dirty, just like the Good Samaritan. Compassion will lead us to action. So how do we react? How do I react when I see someone needing help? That's the sort of challenging questions that present on this lesson. The second point to consider in this lesson is that of cost. Going deeper together also involves personal cost. In the parable we read that the Samaritan went to the man, bandaged his wounds, poured on oil and wine and put him on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, cared for him and financed the cost. Our situations are very unlikely to be similar, but being there for someone in need usually costs in terms of time, energy and money. Time is a precious commodity, often reserved for ourselves and our families. But in order to have a deeper relationships, we may have to interrupt our schedules. Our time and energy might be needed for that neighbour or woman in our group who is ill grieving or feels exhausted due to life circumstances. She might need practical help or it could be an opportunity to share the gospel. The type of help varies, but it requires us to be proactive and generally supportive. It won't be easy, perhaps even messy at times, and certainly involving some measures of sacrifice, but reflecting God's love demands that we be generous and open-handed in our dealings with others. At times we might need to be outside our comfort zones, but those helping need should be able to detect sincerity in our words and actions. The Good Samaritan served diligently. He shared his own resources and inconvenienced himself for someone he didn't even know. How much more than how much more then should we be endeavouring to help someone that we do know? The challenges from this to ask ourselves the questions are, what would I find most difficult if I was to step out of my comfort zone to help someone? What can I personally share with those in need? We move on then to the third lesson to be drawn and that is commitment. So let's imagine we know someone who's in need. We have chatted to them and they have confided in us about their problems. We feel genuine compassion for them 
and our words of concern lead us into a deeper friendship where we are able to practically help, support and bring comfort. What then? Is, it, is that the job done? Is that the box ticked? Let's return to the Good Samaritan and check out his commitment level. We find that his instructions to the innkeeper were, look after him and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. We're not actually told if the injured man was still present with the innkeeper when the Good Samaritan returned, but the level of commitment shown is what many would consider to be over and above the call of duty. The love which the Good Samaritan demonstrated was distinctive and selfless. He could have continued on his travels, but never giving it a second thought. He had done his good turn, now move on. He done more than that. He financed the cost and he followed up the contact. His intentions, however, were to return and settle the account. Such was the depth of his commitment. We can follow this pattern too. Deeper friendships mean keeping in contact, revisiting, checking up in situations, asking for prayer requests and giving assurance that we are still willing and available to help. Questions to ask ourselves following this. How do my actions prove that I am committed to nurturing deeper friendships? How is my commitment to my neighbour an outworking of my commitment to God? Compassion, cost and commitment are all present in this parable, which Jesus told in answer to the question, who is my neighbour? It also provides us with a great example of what devoted to one another, what that means, being devoted to one another, should look like. Just like the Good Samaritan, practising such depth of devotion will mean that we will be unselfish in our actions, unwavering in our service and unprejudiced in our love. The lyrics at the beginning stated that neighbours should be there for one another. The Good Samaritan is renowned for being a good neighbour. At the end of the parable, Jesus said to his listeners, Go and do likewise. With those words ringing in our ears, let's pray for God's help that we might go deeper with him, go deeper with one another and become better witnesses to Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Let us pray. Father, we need your help if we are to go deeper together with others. Help us firstly to go deeper in our relationship with you and as a result of that, be able to show compassion and commitment to those around us, irrespective of what it might cost. In all our relationships, may we reflect your wonderful love. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now we will hear Claire Spratt sing the words of the beautiful song, Beauty in the Brokenness, and she will be accompanied by Alice.
lovely to see you this Thank you. evening. We have a few questions about your work, if you don't mind us asking you. Yeah. First of all, can you tell everyone listening just how wide an area you travel in West Tyrone? Okay, so West Tyrone is the official title of the area. It was easier before they rearranged the council boundaries, um, but Oma and Stravan would be the two main towns. I would go as far as Donamana, uh, partway between Oma and Ballygolly, partway between Oma and Cookstown, Castle Dare comes into it and Kilskiri as well. So Mount Joy really is probably about the centre point of West Stone. Goodness, that's a big area to cover. Yes. <laughs> well, can you tell us what an average typical week involves for you? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> well, <laughs> one way to say, first of all, I would say there's nothing like a typical week. There's nothing typical. Every week is different. Every day is different. It depends as well between summer and winter time. Um, somebody has used the letters of the word poet really to describe what we do. So P, promotion, uh, telling people, visiting people, maybe taking ladies meetings with midweeks, um, just informing people about what's happening. Then the O, the organisation, there's a lot of paperwork needs to be done, like every job, yes, I'm sure. Filling reports, uh, ordering materials, sending emails, writing thank you letters and on and on and on the organisation goes. The E, I'll come back to you in a minute, uh, the T stands for training. And so sometimes there would be special training courses, sometimes maybe just a bespoke training course for a particular church. So that's another aspect of the work. But evangelism uh, covers, I suppose, what people really think of yeah. as the main part of the work. So in the winter time, that would mainly be a mix of school assemblies and good news clubs during the week. Um, it depends which week of the month we're on, how many schools are slotted in that week. And then there's three good news clubs that I'm currently involved in. Then we'd also have youth work uh, with Junior Youth Challenge and Senior Youth Challenge Ministry as well. Then come the summertime, everything changes. Um, there's more probably direct evangelism. Five day clubs would be one of the main ministries of the summertime. There'd also be holiday Bible clubs and camp as well. So there's nothing really like a typical week. Everything's always very different, and but it's good opportunities. Gosh, it's certainly not typical. I don't even know how you time to spare for anything else. That was great. So what are the joys that you would say you see in your work? The joys, yes, there's lots of different joys. Um, probably there's lots of different challenges too. But I suppose the greatest joy of all is children hearing God's word and children responding and coming to trust in the Lord for salvation. Having children coming and listening, uh, whether it's in school, whether it's in clubs or wherever, listening to God's word, engaging in it. Even the ones that ask you the awkward questions, yes, <laughs> it shows their thinking and it shows that they're really um, taking part in it. Um, seeing young people as well, maybe some who I've known in school assemblies or through clubs, and as they have grown up and kept on going through the ministries and are now getting involved themselves and are helping too. So that's an encouragement, knowing as well that there are people who are supporting the work and people are interested in what's going on. is always a great encouragement as well. Gosh, that's, it must be a great encouragement, right? Not to see children going from small mm -hmm. and how they grow up and mm -hmm. come to know. It is, yeah. So our last question, I'm sure you'll be glad to hear. How can we pray ourselves for the work of CEF? Yeah, well, that's great. It's always so encouraging to know about people praying for the work, I suppose, on practical uh, levels for health and strength that's needed each day for safety um, and travel. There's a lot of miles covered along busy roads um, to for wisdom, as there's lots of different plans that are needed and things that have to be considered, especially for how the ministry goes forward in the future. Uh, pray for Christmas as it's coming up. There's different outreaches and there'll be calendars that will be distributed to the schools too. And also for volunteers, there's always a need for volunteers to get involved and to help with the work as well. So those would be just a few of the main things to pray for. Gosh, Heather, thank you very much. That was very enlightening. I'm sure everybody's starting to realise just how much is involved in your job. Mm -hmm. 
but you can be sure of our prayers and support. And thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
and I'm going to put in uh, two teaspoons, and I should have put in that on top of the meat rather than the sweet potato, but it's grand. So two teaspoons of that, and then I've got a hot one, and I'll put in two teaspoons of the hot curry powder. Okay, and also two teaspoons of cumin, ground cumin. Now there's going to be some stocking in on top of this now in a minute, so I don't know, we'll get mixed up. Right, let's put in the stock. So, I have got a lamb stock cube, stock pot, which I like. I like these better than the grumbly ones. And I always think if you put in a bit less liquid, you can always add more. So there's about a half a pint of boiling water in there with the stock cube, or the stock pot. And I'll just put that in. It's not fully dissolved, but it's okay. And just give it a wee stir. Well, we'll do, come back to that. Um, I'm also going to put in a tin of tomatoes. So obviously there's a lot more liquid coming from them. And I have got a half a cup of red lentils. I'm using a half a cup because that was the end of the packet. Now the red lentils will give it a wee bit of texture. They're lovely, a lovely texture in soup and, and these kinds of pot dishes whenever they're cooked down. And so I just gave it a stir there while the camera was off and I was saying that the lentils will give it a nice texture and they'll also, if there was too much liquid, they would help to absorb it as well. Next thing is a wee bit of salt and pepper. So I've got some salt and again because I don't, I would be always very wary of cooking with too much salt. I don't think we need maybe as much as we think we do. It's easier to add it later if necessary and also because I've used a stock pot um, just be careful but if you like lots of salt then go for it. Uh, some coarse black pepper, um, a wee bit of runny honey. So let's say two teaspoons. soft apricots. Now this was a 250 gram bag and I've prepared them all but I don't think I'm going to put them all in at this stage. So there they are chopped up and I'm going to, again this will add a wee bit of texture, a wee bit of flavour but, but certainly texture at the end. I'm going to put in about uh, half of that so about 125 grams. And if you think it could be doing with more, I'm conscious as well that my pot is nearly full. So that's about a hundred, that's about 150 grams, I'd say. And finally, I'm going to put in some spicy mango chutney. And I should get a clean spoon. Oh, I've got a clean spoon here. So let's put in one, two and a half. Okay. Two and a half. No, I think we need to give this a good stir again. And I'm tempted to put more water in, but I am going to hold back on that temptation until it cooks down a wee bit. Um, the water and the fluid seems to be very much, yeah, it's there, it's at the bottom. And there seems to be plenty of it, it's just that the, um, the volume is quite high now. But I think let's trust the process. Um, everything's covered. We can have plenty of chances later on to get it stirred and mixed and let the flavours develop together. But for now, I'm going to put the lid on it. I have got it at high. And I would safely say that that is grand for the next four or five hours. And even at that point then, it should have reduced a bit. It should be well on its way to cooking down and uh, it'll be easier to stir and mix. 
So I intend to come back on and show you this maybe in a few hours and we'll talk more then. Thank you. Hello again. So this has been cooking now for seven hours on high and I would say that you would need to leave it at least six on high. Um, about an hour ago I put in a can of chickpeas so I just put them into the sieve, rinse them, they're all gloopy stuff when they come out of the can, rinse them off and put them in and they have been mixed around well now as well. Earlier I talked about the liquid and I told you I was tempted to put in more and glad I didn't because I actually had to take out about a cup of liquid because all of the the ingredients as they developed the more juice came out than I would have expected so I would actually revise that back and say about a hundred millilitres of water is plenty at the start and as we said you can always add more so I'm going to show you what this looks like um, it really is it's like a stew it's like a ragu it's like a tagine it's whatever you want it to be um, I would think that if you didn't want to serve that with anything, you could just enjoy it because the sweet potato is in there. There's lots of different food sources in there. So on its own would be fine. It would be nice with some green vegetables. So I do intend later to do the mange too and the green beans and to serve that with potatoes. Now my potatoes today are going to be roasted. But uh, a mashed potato would be absolutely lovely with that as well. And you could just do it with rice, um, maybe a wee bit of salad on the side. So I'm going to put some out. I, I'm not ready to do any of that just yet. Um, and I wanted to get this finished. So you can serve it whatever way you like. I'm just going to put out a portion now into the bowl so you can see what it looks like. Um, so there it is. And the meat has become really tender, really melt in the mouth. And the flavours are subtle, but they're definitely there. I put in curry powder and I meant to say at the time that that, uh, it's not a curry. Um, you know, and, and really whatever flavours you want could go in there, but they've all blended together beautifully. So thank you for watching and see you again soon. Bye bye. Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name